hello, hello. Let's see what we have here. We will give folks a moment to uh, respond. Hey, Hojo, what's going on, buddy? Let's see. Dennis Krim, a couple other people starting to join. So once again, we will give this a few moments to see who's there. And uh, I'll see a few people on the Saturday afternoon. See a few new people. Give us a few moments. And Marco, how's it going, Marco? So, all right, so since we have a handful of people here, we'll just get started. So my wife and I were having an interesting conversation over brunch about mindset. Ricky Dover, how you doing, Ricky? And Tom down in Mississippi. And I was going down there in Texas and Vince. So, so anyway, um, my wife and I were having an interesting conversation about just the mindset of people and how you really have to, there's only a handful of things that God actually gave you can complete control over. One is your attitude and the other is your actions. And that is a mindset. That is actually a, a philosophy that needs to be hammered. Antoinette, hey, how you doing? And uh, so really it, it's the philosophy, the principle that you only have complete control over two things, your attitudes and your actions. And it's important to develop a positive mental attitude. And, and because that spills into everything else. And I see it from people. See, once you become aware of these things, then you see it everywhere. Whoever you're around, the people you're associating with, you see it. Whether it's at work, uh, whether you're at play, just in social life, you will begin to notice the difference in mindset of people. And it's essentially whether they have a victim mindset or a victory mindset. And so once again, it's a victim or a victory or victor mindset. And it's something that you get to choose. It doesn't happen easily. In fact, listen, your default is more towards victim. Cornelius, how you doing there? And so, and uh, excuse the background. My wife is actually in there baking and uh, she just dropped something. So she's like, sorry, but. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so she's she's doing a little baking for something we have tomorrow. She's an excellent baker. As a matter of fact, not much of a sweet eater, but when I do eat sweets, it's because she's baking something. So anyway, um, this totally took me all off track. So anyway, yeah, the victim or victory mindset, and really, uh, the default is victim. And here's the problem. What the left does, the left likes to play into the victim mindset. Whenever you run across someone who is a leftist, whether a true believing leftist, you know, the ones who are just like staunchly of that mindset, or those who kind of just tend to lean towards and support leftism, it's because they have a victim mindset. And what you'll see is, is what you will call the dialectic. And they point towards, uh, they, they try to break things up into putting people groups against each other. So what you'll see is you'll see like uh, trying to pit older people against younger people, trying to pit black against white or black against any other ethnic group, or basically pitting ethnic groups against each other or pitting the sexes, the, the ages old battle of the sexes. So you'll have men against women, uh, you'll have rich against poor. That's what the left seeks to do is to exploit that dialectic, pitting one group against another group typically based on the most superficial aspects of your humanity. Uh, in this case, uh, like my wife and I were talking about women, for example, and how there's a lot of women who tend to believe that they have to do everything that much better simply because they're a woman in the workplace. And you know what? That is because you've been indoctrinated 
than the dialectic in leftism. And instead of you kind of going above and beyond, see, because, and trust me, it's the same way uh, with the color of your skin. I was raised to believe that because I was black, I had to be that much better. And you know what? And, and I don't fault my, uh, uh, I don't fault my my parents for teaching me that because, hey, at the end of the day, the environment they grew up in, and in fact, my father in his professional career, uh, my father was one of the very first uh, federal agents in the military, and we'll just leave it at that. Uh, but when he became a, a federal agent in the military, literally, he was one of the first 10, okay? Hey, Spencer, what's going on? That's my buddy right there, Spencer. We go way back 27 years, wow. Yeah, coming up on 27 years. Um, yeah, see, there you go, my buddy Spencer, the Victor thought process. And, and yeah, so what happens is the, uh, the, the, what they experienced being what are they like my family, whenever we'd go places for my father's work event, we were one of the very few, uh, as we would say, we're, we were the, the, the speck of pepper in a sea of salt. We were one of the very few blacks that were around. And, uh, and so I understand the thought process. Trust me, I understand the thought process of saying that because you're black, you have to go above and beyond. I understand the thought process of believing that because you're a woman, you have to go above and beyond. However, I disagree with it. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a mistake for you to put that into your children. It's a mistake for you to think that way because it actually puts you on edge. You're, you're, not, act, you're not behaving naturally. So, you know, here's the thing. Excellence should be your goal regardless of the color of your skin. Excellence should be your goal regardless of your ethnicity. Excellence should be your goal regardless of your gender. If you simply focus on excellence, everything else will take care of itself. Does that mean that things will be perfect? No, it does not mean that things will be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And that's another fault of says things are not perfect, therefore they're bad. And it's one of the things I talk about with unhyphenated America, right? And one of the things I say on the website is that we know that America is great because perfection is not a requirement for greatness. See, that's what the left does. They say they will point out a flaw. They'll say, oh, this was not perfect. So it's not great. They will point out all the flaws of America. And they'll say, look, America can't be great because America is not perfect. And so leftist regressive socialist ideology seeks to point out and say, they, they try to talk about paradise, right? Because leftism in, in and of itself tries to promote the idea that you can create heaven on earth, right? And here's the thing, this is what they always say with leftism. If you give them enough power, enough money, enough control, they will eventually create perfection. They'll create heaven on earth. And then when it fails, and it always fails, invariably, it always fails. They say, well, the only reason why we failed is because we didn't have enough power, didn't have enough money, didn't have enough control. So next time, if you give us more power, money, and control, we'll create perfection. We'll create heaven on earth. We'll create utopia if only you give us enough power, money, and control. And for those of you who haven't listened before, I, I, I repeat these stories a lot, but I'm going to take a few minutes and kind of go back into this about the influence of socialism in America. And excuse me, I'm going to pull a Rubio and get a drink of water. I guess it's going to stop me from being able to be president because I had a drink of water while I was talking. So, uh, but anyway, so there's a guy named Robert Owen who was a British industrialist in the 1800s during the Enlightenment period. He was a very wealthy man, which is interesting how leftists and socialists tend to be wealthy, right? Uh, uh, and so he believed in this Enlightenment period that they could create the perfect society and the perfect man, uh, but they had to be free from a few things. So just a little background of Robert Owen. Uh, he, once again, British industrialist meaning he owned factories and he was very uh, 
he, he was concerned with the way that people lived and he felt like he could create something better. Uh, he couldn't do it in England because England had a long established uh, history of the monarchy, so on and so forth. But in 1825, the United States was still wide open. I mean, east of the, excuse me, west of the Mississippi River was still wide open. And so here's what Robert Owen decided to do. He heard about this town in Indiana that was founded by a group of German Lutherans. And what he said, he, and these group of German Lutherans who had built up this existing town decided they wanted to sell their town and move further west. Because God, their leader, had told them, and they spoke and said, hey, you know what? You've done enough here, time to pack up and move. So they put the town up for, for sale, the entire town. And Robert Owen purchased the entire town because he figured that he could put his socialist experiment to work here in the wilderness of the west which Indiana in 1825 was definitely the wilderness. And so uh, they basically, he and his merry band of socialists bought, the, well, he bought the town and he and his merry band of socialists moved into this town. Remember, an existing town. You imagine any town in America. This town, if I remember correctly, had over 100 buildings. Uh, the land, the farmland was already all cultivated. It was turnkey. Right. So he and his merry band of socialists, and that's what they call themselves, moved into this town. They renamed it as New Harmony, Indiana. If you don't believe me, go ahead and Google it. I always tell you, listen, anything I say, go ahead and Google it yourself. New Harmony, Indiana. So he and his merry band of socialists went out to New Harmony, Indiana, and they implemented their plan to bring heaven on earth, to bring utopia to this town that, that already had cultivated land. The forest was was rich with a uh, 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 deer and other wild game and, and there was a stream nearby this fresh water source and there were existing buildings it's just like you taking your luggage and moving in and just going about your daily life that's what happened in new harmony indiana and you know what two years in two years those morons were starving and the town was falling apart why well i'll just skip to the point to say that because leftist regressive socialist ideology is stupid it really is and there's so much since 1825. Now we're coming up on 200 years. You know, we're like 193 years away from when he started that town in, uh, in New Harmony, Indiana. And yet with 190 plus years of documentation to show that under all different circumstances, whether it was New Harmony, Indiana, whether it was the Soviet Union, whether it's Venezuela, whether it's Cuba, anywhere you go that leftism is implemented, it fails massively, catastrophically, tragically it fails. Look at California. Is there more, is there a state in the United States that's more stuck on stupid than California? Why? California is still rich with natural resources. It is really probably one of our most beautiful states, right? Rich with natural resources. A lot of our food comes from California. But yet California is failing tragically because of leftism, because they bought into this idea that leftism promotes that everybody is a victim. So they start kowtowing and they start creating these special interest groups, either based off of ethnicity or gender or any of those things. And they create these special interest groups and they say, you're a victim. Now, what leftism says is that if you are anything other than a Christian conservative white male that you're a victim that's what leftism says everybody else i mean it's a, what it basically says is that the entire planet is a victim of this super tiny handful of christian constitutional conservative american white males so i mean what, what are we talking about uh I mean, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head. I think of the 325 million people in the United States of America, what, you're talking about 170 million of them are, are, are white, and so you're talking, what are you, 85 million uh, uh, white males, and of those, how many of them are Christian conservative, constitutional conservatives? I mean, what are we talking, 35, 40 million? And here, here's what leftism promotes. Leftism promotes that about... 40 million Christian constitutional conservative white males are victors in the whole rest of the rest of the world. The other 7.3 billion people are victims of those 40 million white males. That's what leftism wants you to believe. I mean, it's it's stupid. Listen, when you hear somebody say that stuff, that's stupid. 
Just tell them, don't even cut, cut to the chase, that's stupid. And what also does, it creates an inferiority complex. So what you're having is that if you are a white female, it wants you to believe that you're a victim of white males. If you're a black female, you're a victim of white males. That's what they want. That's what leftism wants you to promote. But that's what leftism promotes and wants you to believe. So it keeps pushing this mindset. And you know what happens when you begin to see, when you keep hearing that you're a victim, then when you look in the mirror, you only see a victim. You're a loser. You see a loser. So, I mean, just think about it for you. I mean, like, just imagine going in the mirror every day and saying to yourself, I'm a loser. I suck. Because that's what you do when you embrace leftist, regressive, socialist ideology. And you embrace the idea that because you're a woman, because you're black, because you're homosexual, because you're anything other than a Christian conservative white male, what leftism wants you to believe is that you're a victim and that you suck. And that you'll always be a victim of that really tiny, mean, think about it. I mean, you, you do the math. If there's roughly, and, and once again, this is, I'm highballing this number because there's less. If there's 40 million white Christian conservative, constitutional conservative American males, Think about just the idea of saying that they're all privileged. So when somebody says that there's this white privilege, they're, they're stupid. I mean, there's no nice way to say it. I mean, you know, it's funny because people say, well, Chris, you shouldn't say stuff like that because, uh, you know, you'll get more with honey than you do with salt. In this case, it's like, well, this is not a case where it's more with honey with, than it is with salt. Listen, there's a reason why the walk away movement is exploding. I don't know what the numbers are, but the last time I looked, it was over 100,000 and it's ballooning. And I'm sure there's quite a few more people who are walking away than what you're seeing on the website. It's because more people are recognizing that this is stupid. It's just stupid, right? I mean, there's no nice way to say it. So here's the thing. It, it, there's a path that you go down, right? There, you reach this fork in the road, and if you go left, right? So I'm actually going left, but, you know, of course, the camera reverses it, right? But if you go left, leftism is victim mindset. And here's the thing. It's a very narrow path. The path of leftism, the, once you start going down that road to the left, to victim mindset, there's nowhere for you to like, you know, you can't even hang a U-turn anywhere. Once you realize that you've gone down the wrong path, you can't even, you know, to, to hang a U-turn or there's no place to turn around. You know what you have to do? You got to stop dead in your tracks, put it in reverse, and you got to drive. You got to do like this. You know, like you're driving backwards. Luckily, we got backup cameras now, right? So you can use your backup camera. But really, once you come to the realization of what leftism promotes, when you start to adopt that walk away mindset, you actually have to put your car in reverse, put yourself in reverse and back up. And when you finally get to that point, when you've backed up enough to where you see the path where you can actually go to the right towards victory, towards freedom, everything changes. And exactly, as my brother Derek Perry says, when you make that right turn, it's a broad path. There's options. There's no options to the left. It's hellbound. That's it. Point blank period. It's hellbound. When you make that turn to the left, when you decide to embrace victim mentality, it's hellbound. Don't get me wrong. There are people who will seem to do well on the path to leftism. There are wealthy people. If you're if you're looking at things from a purely worldly standpoint, it's not as if everyone who goes to the left uh, ends up in poverty. There are people, once again, you see Hollywood or Holly Weird as I call it, right? Hashtag Holly Weird. There's people on the left who do well along the way. But make no doubt about it, No, have, have no mistakes, right? It's a path that eventually there's a cliff at the end of it. Right. It's period. There's a cliff. You don't have a parachute. Uh, you're going to go down in flames. That's what happens when you continue down that path to the left. And, and here's the thing. Once again, if you go the path to the right, 
it doesn't mean that everything in your life will be peachy keen, right? Everything in your life is not going to be perfect. And that's, once again, one of the things that the left tries to do is it tries to say perfection is not possible to the right. And you know what? You're correct. It's not possible. As long as you are a human being, as long as you are living and breathing on this earth, perfection is not possible. And when you begin to accept that perfection is not possible, but greatness is, perfection is not possible, but you can move towards better. Well, that's what happens. That's what the beauty of America is. And when you start thinking of it as we do, you know, once again, I am the executive director of unhyphenatedamerica.org. And we believe that America's best when it's unhyphenated. We understand that what the left tries to do is to put people in boxes. We understand that they want you to be against someone based off of whether they're of a different ethnicity, whether they're of a different gender. And there's only two genders. It's only male and female. Sorry, not sorry. There's only two genders. Or they want you to have, and, and what the left promotes is greed, trust and believe. They promote greed, envy, and covetousness. They want you to look at your fellow man and see that that person has more than you in some way, shape, or form, and they want you to be filled with envy and covetousness and actually anger. And you know what they do? Those wicked people, as I call them, the you've heard me use this term, right? I, I have three terms that I use. Museum-grade morons, industrial-grade morons, and weapons-grade morons. The museum-grade is the... the <laughs> the masses, right? And, and Stalin and Lenin talked about them, right? The, the ignorant masses who just live in their feelings. So they're easily manipulated. Who manipulates them? The industrial grade morons. Industrial grade morons are true believers. They're actually a relatively small number. It's the people who are running colleges. It's pretty much 95% of college professors. It's about 95% of what I call the lamestream media are industrial grade morons. They really believe that leftism, given enough power, money, and control, can create utopia, heaven on earth. So when somebody says that's not possible, and somebody says, hey, you know what? What you really need is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that really angers them. Because they want to believe deeply. Listen, these people have, I would say, more faith in their belief of leftism than the average so-called Christian, the average professing Christian has in their belief of Christianity. Trust me, these leftists believe, now the shame is, there's nothing whatsoever to back up their belief. In fact, the evidence is totally contrary to their belief system. There is nothing that actually gives them reason to believe what they believe, but they believe it. But they will call me as a Christian, they'll say I'm foolish, right? Because I believe in something that I can't see. Well, you believe in something that has been proven to be false, which is why you're a moron, an industrial grade moron, right? And then, so you got the museum grade morons, you got the industrial grade morons, and you got the weapons grade morons. Who are the weapons grade morons? They're the people who actually have the power to create public policy. They're the ones who can go out there and make laws, not only make laws, but enforce laws. And they're dangerous, right? They're very dangerous people. They're, they're wicked people. And here's the funny thing about a lot of these uh, weapons grade morons. Many of them don't even actually believe they don't believe on the level of the average industrial grade moron. They just like the power, money, and control. So for them, they're like, hey, you know what? If I can manipulate people, what the heck? Why not? That's what they believe. So they join, for example, the Democratic Party because they're figuring, hey, you know what? I mean, look, listen, the Congressional Black Caucus is full of weapons grade morons. Because if you look at every Congressional Black Caucus uh, uh, represented district, they pretty much suck. I mean, you can look around and see that the school systems, the crime is highest in, in, in congressional black caucus controlled districts. The, the education 
sucks in congressional black caucus controlled districts. Perfect example, right across the river in Prince George's County, Maryland, right? The state of Maryland has the fifth, it used to be fifth, now it's the sixth rank public school system in the entire country. Now, I'm, I'm not even gonna go down the road about public school systems in general, but uh, if we're gonna use that as a benchmark, Maryland has the sixth rank public school system in the country. There's 25 school districts in Maryland, right? But the two worst school districts in Maryland, hmm, who represents them? Oh, I think it would be Congressional Black Caucus members, right? Elijah Cummings. So, so here's the thing. The, the second worst school district is what? Prince George's County. Now, Prince George's County is the wealthiest, wealthiest predominantly black county in the country. And the majority of the people who live in Prince George's County are federal employees and federal contractors. So they're growing rich and fat off the, the hog of the federal government. So, so it's a wealthy county, but the schools suck. I mean, it's, it looks good, but the schools suck. Why? Because they've embraced leftism. They actually teach all their students that they're victims because they're black. That's what they teach in Prince George's County public school systems. Uh, it's funny because I used to work over in Prince George's County. So I would see like these signs and of course it's election season. And I had to laugh because, you know, they're like vote for so-and-so, right? And, you know, because here's the thing. The primary is the only thing that matters in Prince George's County. I mean, there's there's like hardly any Republicans running. I don't even think, I mean, I know there is a Republican uh, party uh, in Prince George's County, Maryland, but they, I mean, in no disrespect, because I know some of those Republicans, but it doesn't really matter. They're not gonna win. Prince George's County is a staunchly Democrat county. But here's the thing, I always have to laugh because like, what's the sense, what does it matter which African-American, and listen, listen, when I talk about African-Americans, I talk about exclusively Democrats because uh, African-American is Marxism for Negroes. That's what it is. The rest of us, my birth certificate said Negro, said black. It didn't say African-American. It was all African-Americanism is something that came about and, and it's a victim mindset. When you call yourself an African-American, you're calling yourself a victim. You're embracing cultural Marxism, that dialectic, right? Pitting one group against another. You're saying to yourself, I am a victim of the evil white man. That's what you say. That is what you're saying, whether you realize it or not, when you refer to yourself as a hyphenated American, specifically an African-American in this case, right? And it's a failure mindset. It always leads to failure. As I said, just because someone might be successful at this point in time doesn't mean that they're not heading over the cliff. African-Americanism is cultural Marxism for Negroes. And Prince George's County is controlled, totally dominated by Marxist-minded African-Americans. And that's why the schools suck. Because they teach a failure mindset. They teach a victim mindset. So they're the second worst public school system in the state of Maryland, victims. So who's the worst? Oh, that would be uh, Baltimore City. Who's their representative? Elijah Cummings, right? We can jump on down to Atlanta. John Lewis, you know, civil rights icon. Chris, you're not supposed to talk bad about John Lewis. He can kick rocks. Because I had to laugh and people say, well, yeah, John Lewis, he took a whooping for the, you know, for, for, for the cause of civil rights. And then he turned around and joined the same party of people who whooped his behind. They stomped him. They donkey stomped him. And then he turned around and rode the donkey. <laughs> That's just funny. John Lewis, Congressional Black Caucus member down in Atlanta. What did that fool say? Oh. I'll be willing to, to, to go to jail for illegal aliens. To why? why? Why are you talking about going to jail for illegal aliens? What about the people in your own district? Your district sucks. The schools suck. The crime rate's high. It's because it's a mindset. It's a victim mindset. And then, once again, go back up to Baltimore City. Everybody knows Baltimore sucks. 
Why are we acting all brand new? Chris, why are you saying it sucks? Because it sucks. Every measurable attribute that you can talk about, schools, so on and so forth, it sucks. Baltimore City had five schools, right? In this school district, they had five schools last year where not a single student, none, not a single student in five schools passed the basic basic competencies, a competency test. I'm like, yo, you trying to tell me y'all don't have like a nerd? There's not a geek? There's not a curve wrecker in any of those schools? Well, maybe it's because their entire time they've been indoctrinated with cultural Marxism for Negroes, which is a victim mindset. So even those who do manage to graduate, and by the way, look at Washington, D.C., Chocolate City. There was a big thing. Now, they made a big deal of it, and it's going to be swept underneath the rug because they, they're not going to. Listen, they'll spend, they spent more time talking about Stormy Daniels than they did of the fact that I think somewhere in the neighborhood of one third of the high school graduates from the class of 2018 here in Washington, D.C., did not meet the minimum requirements for attendance. Which means, so listen, if they're not even showing up for class regularly, do you really think, so I, I guess what you want me to believe is that that one third, they were the brainiacs, they just knew everything, so they didn't need to show up for class. Really? No, that's not how it happened. These kids were skipping class and the schools don't care because they're still getting paid anyway. But along the way, they're being taught a victim mindset. And as Professor Walter Williams, who's an eco economics professor here at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia, as he talked about, he says, it's like, you're perpetrating a massive fraud. You're doing a disservice to these young men and women when you hand them a high school diploma that's supposed to certify that you meet a particular requirement, that you're able to do math, you're able to read, write, and all these things at a particular grade point level, and yet they cannot do that. So you send them out into the world and you say, here, you're ready to fly. And you throw them out of the nest and they plummet down and they hit the ground and they die. They might not die right then and there, but they're going to hit the ground and they're going to die economically, socially, politically. They're going to die because you fail to prepare them. That's what happens when you have these leaders these culturally Marxist leaders who have a victim mindset, they're doing well for themselves, but they have a victim mindset and they pass that on. They pass that poison on to the, each generation of new children and these children go out into the world ill-prepared to be successful. And you know what happens? They become angry because they know that something is wrong. Why am I not succeeding? I mean, they look around and they see like, okay, well, other people are succeeding. Why am I not? And then remember that leftism, that indoctrination says, oh, I know why, because I'm black. Oh, I know why, because I'm female. Oh, I know why. It's because of any of those superficial aspects that they've been indoctrinated, it's been pounded in them. They've been pounded with this ideology that they're a victim. So when they go out there and they fail, they say, oh, well, it's because of, you know, those evil, white, Christian, constitutional, conservative Americans. They're somehow holding me back. Even though you grew up in Washington, D.C., even though you grew up in Detroit, you grew up in Baltimore, you grew up in Atlanta, you grew up in any one of these centers where, guess what, you typically live under up to seven layers of Democrat Party control. And either they're white Democrats or black Democrats or Hispanic Democrats, it doesn't matter. The average person in these areas lives under seven layers, whether it's the, 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 the school board, the county commissioners, the, uh, uh, the state reps, the U.S. reps, mayor, police chief, all these are Democrats. And in many cases, if you're black, they're also black. They're African-Americans and they're failing because they're being taught a victim mindset. And what I encourage you to do is walk away. But as I said, walk away, listen, unfortunately, because the further you go down that path, there is no way for you to hang a U-turn. So you have to put it in reverse. You gotta keep backing up. 
And eventually, when you come over to this side, when you make that right turn, once again, the camera's going to flip-flop it, but I'm going right. You make that right turn, freedom is on. It's a possibility. Freedom is dangerous. Freedom doesn't mean that you will not fail. In fact, there's greater probability of failure simply by trying. But the more you try, remember, failure in and of itself is not fatal. It's just a path. You fail forward. When you have a victory mindset, you will fail. You will try, you will fail, and then you'll adjust. And you will try, and you will fail, and you adjust. You take two steps forward, but you take one step back. Wait a minute. I guess that means I'm still one step ahead of where I was. Two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. And it feels at that moment like you're failing. But then you turn around and look and you see that you're further ahead than where you began. That's a victory mindset. And leftism does not choose that. It does, leftism does not, excuse me, promote that, right? And, and, and yes, I see some other people, Carolyn. Hey, how you doing, Carolyn? My boy, Derek. Listen, I've, I've gone a little longer than I intended to go, which tends to happen, but uh, it's so apparent when you, when you begin to understand the difference between a victor or a victim mindset, you see it everywhere. You recognize it. And for people like myself, whenever I have the opportunity, I try. I, I, and my wife will say, she's, you know, she's like, you know, she'll say that Chris seems a lot harsher than I really am, that I have a heart for people. Listen, I, I have a heart for people. I want people to be successful. I am a, a, a disciple, if you will, of that dude, Booker T. Washington, right? Because, and, and this is what's funny, this is what's sad to me, actually is that I am a Christian constitutional conservative. And as a Christian constitutional conservative, I embrace the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I understand that I was created fearfully and wonderfully made. My creator knew that I was going to exist way before I ever came into being because my creator is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. So he knew that there was going to be a Christopher Harris long before my father even existed. He knew that at the moment when my father's sperm met my mother's egg, a unique DNA signature was created, mine. He knew that I would go the path that I'm going. And even though I had a victim mindset at one point, and I devoted several years to backing it up, to get away from that, to flush that. And this is what I said. I said this on the walk away page, right? The hashtag walk away page. And I actually said to the administrators, I said, listen, it's not enough for you to just walk away. You have to do a, a mental, emotional, spiritual enema. You have to flush that crap out. You have to flush it all. You can't leave any of it. It's poison. You have to flush that mindset. And once you begin to develop a victory mindset, you see things differently. Everything looks different. The view is better. It's brighter. It doesn't mean that there's never any cloudy days, but you know the sun will come up in the morning. It's always darkest before the light. That's what you know when you have a victory mindset. When you know that you have salvation, when you know that any suffering that you're enduring here on earth is only temporary. When I became a Christian, when I, and actually listen, I was raised in church, but I didn't have a personal relationship with my Lord and Savior until I was in my 30s. And when I developed that personal relationship, everything changed. I flushed the victim mindset. This is why I tell when people say that they're a Christian, but yet they have a victim mindset, I'm like, no, you still haven't gone further enough. You're still too far down the left towards victim. Literally, when you really have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you understand what that means, you flush the victim mindset. They cannot exist at the same time. 
It doesn't mean that you're not going to experience hardship. Let me reiterate that. It does not mean that you're not going to experience hardship. But when you really, truly embrace the fact that you were created, that God is no respecter of persons, that you have the same value in the eyes of your creator as anyone else, regardless of their age, regardless of their gender, regardless of their ethnicity. When you recognize that, then as I say, one, you're a Christian, but also you're down the path of being a unhyphenated American. That's them. And I know there are people out there who are ignorant and, and that's what it is. They're ignorant. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't have any cut cards on that. Listen, if you've ever said or if you believe that the Constitution says that people of color like myself, because my family is able to trace our lineage back to at least 1813, where my three times great grandfather was born on a plantation here in Virginia. He was the son of a white male and a African slave female. But people would have you to believe that the Constitution said that my great, great, great grandfather and my great, great, great grandmother were three, three fifths of a human being. That's not true. Reading is fundamental. When you go back and read that the whole topic of the three fifths was solely for the purpose, solely for the purpose of electing representatives. And if you stop to think, I know that's hard. If you're a leftist, thinking is hard. Listen, it's a lot easier for me now because I've walked away from leftism. When you're a leftist, thinking makes smoke come off the top of your head. I mean, you'll, you'll break a sweat thinking because you have victim mindset. When you have a victory mindset, thinking becomes a lot easier. But when you, if you believe that the Constitution said that we were three-fifths of a human being, it's because you've embraced leftism and you haven't actually read exactly what was said in the proper context. In fact, if that three fifths compromise was not there, the South would have ruled for a long time. Slavery would have continued because the South Democrats would have been able to count their slaves in the census which would have allowed them to have more members of Congress. That was the whole purpose of the three-fifths compromise, that they wanted to create a nation, right? They wanted the Constitution to be ratified. The South was not willing to ratify the Constitution if they could not count a portion <clears throat> of their slaves. The North said, well, that's kind of ridiculous because you deny the humanity. And here's something to stop and think about. Leftism actually dehumanizes people. Let's go back to slavery. In order to rationalize putting another human being in slavery, in, in slavery, what they had to do, especially the form of slavery that existed, they had to dehumanize. If you look at all the documentation, they'll try to make it seem as if African slaves were less than human. They, they didn't even want to acknowledge the humanity of African slaves. So the Constitution itself, when it says three-fifths of all persons, it bestowed personhood. It acknowledged, it forced the Democrats who were leftists, right? It forced Democrats to acknowledge the personhood of Blacks. That's what it did. Persons. Before, they wouldn't even acknowledge that we were human beings, that we were persons. So in that documentation, unbeknownst to them, they were acknowledging the personhood of Blacks. But then for the purpose of determining representation, three-fifths of all persons held in bondage were counted in the census towards uh, appointing, or excuse me, uh, um, the number of congressional seats people had. If you learn how to think and you read that, you're like, aha. But see, let's think about this. Remember, they dehumanized those African slaves. Well, look at what the left has done now with abortion. It's not a human being, it's just a glob of cells. Look at what they've done. They've dehumanized that person, that human being in the womb. When in reality is, look, we knew from a biblical standpoint that God knew you in your mother's womb 
the hairs on your head were numbered. He knew you. you had, and, but here's the thing what we now know because of science. And see, the left says that people like me as Christian constitutional conservatives are anti-science. And that's what they're, all they're doing is projecting. The reality is leftism is in and of, it, in and of itself an unscientific uh, ideology. Because science proves that the moment your father's sperm met your mother's egg, you were created. You were a human being at the earliest stage of de human development. Left unmolested in the womb, nine months later, you would be born. And so if they took a tissue sample of you at the instant that your father's sperm fertilized your mother's egg, and they took a tissue sample and they put that in a Petri dish, and nine months later, when you came into the world butt naked, upside down, screaming, they took a tissue sample and they put that in a Petri dish. And they, let's say we fast forward to today, and they took a tissue sample of you, and they put that in a Petri dish, and they took those three separate Petri dishes, and they showed them to any reputable DNA expert and said, hey, can you tell us who these three individuals are? They would say, oh, that's Chris Harris. It's all the same person. If you didn't tell them when these tissue samples were saying, taken and just say, hey, who, who is this individual? The, who are these individuals? They say, well, it's one, it's all the same individual. Because I was me at the moment my father's sperm met my mother's egg. I was me when I came out the womb kicking and screaming, and I'm me today. Science has proven that. The Bible said it a long time ago. I am a person. And God is no respecter of persons. And when you have a victory mindset, you understand that. So you don't fall for the, the, the tricks of the left when they try to get you to believe that you're a victim in this world. That you're inherently, and remember, what they're trying to teach you is that you are inherently and forever a victim simply because of your age, your gender, because there's only two, your ethnicity, that you're inherently a victim. That's what the left wants you to believe. And there's no good that comes from that. Nothing good comes from that. You have to decide to choose either to be a victor or a victim. You get to choose, because remember, as I, said, as I said at the beginning, there's only two things in this world that God gave you complete control of. Your attitude mindset, ideology, worldview, your attitude and your actions. And your actions can't run counter to your attitude. Your actions can't run counter to your worldview. Your actions cannot run counter to your mindset. So be careful of how you think. Be careful of what you believe. Stop and think. Do I have a victim mindset? Have I been indoctrinated to have a victim mindset? Or do I have a victor mindset? Listen, if you haven't consciously chosen to have a victor mindset, if you're not working on that consistently, if you're not mindful of the books you read, the audio and video that you listen to and watch, and the people you associate with, you have a victim mindset. It's very sneaky. It's just like the serpent in the, in the garden. It's very cunning, very sneaky. A victim mindset will sneak up on you real quick. I constantly have to guard my mind against a victim mindset, especially being black in America, because the left automatically assumes that people will see me and say, oh, you're black, you must be a victim. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And that's one of the reasons I like wearing my hat because I like to blow people's mind. I like to walk around wearing t-shirts that speak ill of socialism. I like to walk around wearing t-shirts that speak well of America because I want you to know I'm not a victim. I'm impervious to, I shouldn't say I'm impervious, but uh, I'm highly resistant to the point of being near impervious to your leftist ideology. I flushed it. I don't accept it at all. And here's the thing. I have to laugh because there are leftist, regressive, socialist-minded white males who really want me to believe that I should see myself as inferior to them.
and it blows their mind when I look at them and roll my eyes or walk away because I'm not your average black man that yes, even though there was an attempt somewhat maliciously, but somewhat uh, without intent to indoctrinate me with leftism, I reject it. So I feel, and this is the thing, and I'll just say this in closing, the difference between people like myself, Christian constitutional conservatives, who happen to be black, the difference between myself and Marxist-minded African Americans is I feel inferior to no man. I don't have a victim mindset. I don't feel like simply because you happen to be white or a male that you have a certain privilege in America that I don't have. Here's I know, if I pursue excellence, if I am my best me, I'll be successful at whatever level I choose to be because America is the best place in the world to do and be that. There's no better place for black, Asian, Hispanic, female. There's no better place in the world to be anything other than a white male than in America because you don't have to be a white male to be successful in America. That's what makes America great. America is no respecter of persons. If you understand, if you believe in, if you promote the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, then you're an American. And there's no need for any prefix or suffix. You're just an American. And you can live your best life. Doesn't mean that you won't have struggles. Doesn't mean that you won't experience failure. But it's better here than anywhere else. But it's all about your mindset. Choose to be either a victor or a victim. Gotta run. Take care. God bless.